Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's make Premiere Pro simple. Now, the first thing to realize about Premiere Pro is it's a professional application and it has decades of experience, so it has a ton of tools. If you're a new user or a fairly new user to Premiere Pro, you probably don't use the source monitor. If you do, great, leave it on. But let's have a look at the way that we can redefine the interface because there are so many panels and we probably don't need all of those panels. You'll probably need just a few. So we're going to take things and make it easier. But the first thing we're gonna do is make an easy sequence and save it as a preset. You won't believe how easy this is. By the way, some of these features are going to be CC only. Some you might be able to use in previous versions. If you do have Creative Cloud, then just update to the latest version. Right, let's have a look. Okay, so I have a new project and I have media. So if you're a typical YouTuber, you've got your camera footage over here, you probably have one camera, and that's all the footage. To make a sequence, all you have to do is drag that footage over here. If these are all the same frame size, then it doesn't matter. But if you have one 4K camera and one HD camera, then you need to make sure you're dragging in the, the file size that you want. It always takes the name of the clip that it created the sequence from. So I'll select that and just call it my sequence. Obviously, you'll give it a more descriptive name. And now we have a sequence. So if you're making this out of a typical DSLR, then um, great, you're ready to go and everything is good. But we have three video tracks here. Do we really need three? Right click on the top one and choose delete track and it gets rid of that track. Do we need three audio tracks? Maybe, but let's get rid of that. One, delete track. So now we've got two audio, two video, with the video in here and a master stereo track. What if this is the way we want our sequence to always be? In the little flyout menu, you can choose to create a preset from sequence. And I'll call this my DSLR preset. Click OK, and there it is. If you want to create a new sequence, you can click down here and create a new sequence or go to the file menu, new, sequence, or use the keyboard shortcut. And if you look now in your presets down at the bottom, there is my DSLR. And I've made a few others uh, on my own, but there's my DSLR preset. And if you click OK, you'll make another sequence. I think this is just a great way to ensure you're making the, the same sequence each and every time. If you upgrade your camera, make a new one and then name it accordingly. Um, okay, next up, let's start changing the interface and changing the, how many workspaces are available to really make things simple. First of all, here's the source monitor. Nothing's open in it right now. To close that, click on this little Hamburg menu, little flyout menu. On older versions, it's over on the right-hand side. And let's close that. The effects controls, we want those. Audio clip mixer, let's close that. Metadata, bye bye All right, let's go down into the bottom. We will obviously want our project bin, but we want to have it in a different location. I'm going to drag this around and show you how you can snap panels to other panels. You have to drag by the name of the panel. So I'm gonna hold my mouse down while I'm dragging this so you see what happens. When you get a large blue outline like this, if you let go, it's, it ends up behind the current panel. If you drag it below, then it will go below. And that's the same for anything, on the right, on the left, on the up and the down. But if you drag all the way to the left, very carefully, you'll see a green line show up. And now our project panel is locked to the left-hand side and it's the full height from top to bottom. It's a little bit big, so we'll resize that. And you can see if we turn on our thumbnail view, it's a great way to see all of our assets. So let's keep going. The media browser, 
it might be a good idea to put that behind the project bin. So drag the name over to the project bin, get the blue in the center, let go. Now we've got our media browser and we've got the project bin right there. Libraries, I like libraries, but for now let's close that panel. Info, bye-bye. Effects, well, why don't we take our effects and drag it behind the effects controls? Again, drag the name into the middle, let go. Now we've got our effects and we've got our effects controls. Markers, we can always open those up later, but let's close that and close that. Now notice how big our timeline is. Over on the right, our meters, we can shrink that down. Now we've got a really big timeline. We have effects controls and effects, and maybe we want a bigger program monitor. So let's drag that over and drag that down. We've got a nice big preview. Okay, so here is the view that we, we like. How do we save this? Well, there's a couple of ways. You can go to this little flyout menu on the end and edit workspaces. I think it's always safe to go to the window menu, workspaces, and immediately save this as a new workspace, not save changes to this workspace because we're editing the editing workspace. So save new workspace, and I'll call this simple. Click OK, and where the heck did it go? All the way over here on the right. If we go back to the editing workspace, it's going to look exactly the same because we just edited the editing workspace and that's the current workspace. We can reset the editing workspace back to the factory setting. And if you have the newest version of Premiere Pro, double clicking on the workspace name resets that workspace. If you have an older version in the window menu, workspace, reset changes. So I'm gonna double click on my editing workspace. So I now have that original factory one, but I also have my simple one. I'd like to clean this up. There are way too many here that I don't use. So for that, we'll go to the little flyout menu and edit workspaces. This is a resizable dialog box, making it easier to see all of them. So I'll drag it down and you'll see three sections. Bar, that's the ones we see, overflow, on the outside, and then do not show. Ooh, this one looks good. Let's bring some of these we don't use. Learning, assembly, and CS5, I'm not using that. Mogerts is one I made. There's simple, let's drag simple all the way up to the first section. Click OK, wow, simple, editing, color, effects, if I want to go to color or graphics, I still have those, but now I've got my simple workspace. One last thing in the window menu, workspaces, import workspace from projects. If you turn this on, it means that anytime you open up a, a project that has other than factory workspaces in it, those workspaces will be imported. Now, most professionals don't like this and turn it right off, but maybe as a new user, you want to be alerted to the, this simple workspace when you're opening it in other projects. All right, there you go. Premiere Pro doesn't have to be difficult. We can simplify it and make it and customize it exactly the way you want. If you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more like our fantastic donors, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and on the front of the channel. Donate once or monthly love our PayPal donors. If you want to be notified of our weekly tutorials, you got to ring the bell below. All right, till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to make you feel comfortable and feel safe in editing when you are in control.